Over the past few weeks, we've been exploring what our glorious country has to offer as a staycation destination, and it hasn't disappointed. So, where to now, you ask? Well, today, Claire is turning her attention to the capital. As part of Falter Ireland's Make a Break for It campaign, I'm having a day out in Dublin. And I'm delighted to say I'm kicking it all off in my beautiful hometown of Hoth. The peninsula is perhaps most famous for its stunning coastal walks, which provide incredible views of Dublin Bay. And who better to tell me more about the area than Hoth native and local guide Shane O'Doherty. So Shane, I always say no matter where you are in the world, the best way to see it is with a local and you know all the hidden gems of Hoth. Yeah, and so we kind of see Hoth really within this biosphere as the capital of adventure. And whatever it is that you might fancy doing outside, we'd like to think you'd be able to do it here. We have, I'll do the hikes, uh, we have the e-bikes, uh, paddle boarding, the sailing, the trips around the island, however you want to get closer to the habitats of this coastal town, Hoth is the place to do it. And we're famous here in Hoth for the cliff walks and yeah. you know some of the off the beaten track walks. Yeah, and there's more even to Hoth than the cliff walks in that in the hinterland, on the heathlands, in the grassland, in the woodland, in our own little Southeast Asian rainforest of a jungle, there's all of the different ways that you can get around this place. And I've lived here in Hoth for most of my life, Shane, and I'm ashamed to say I've never been on a hike with you. We'll have to amend that very soon. Can't wait. And if you're looking to relax after stretching those legs, why not check out one of Hoth's award-winning restaurants? Located at the end of the West Pier, Aqua is best known for its locally sourced seafood and spectacular views of Hoth Harbour. With my belly full, it was time to soak up the last of the views before I made my way into the city centre. First up for me, the National Museum of Ireland Archaeology, where a host of treasures await. So Maeve, the museums of Dublin are well and truly open at the moment. Yes, so here at the National Museum we're delighted to be back open to the public and to be welcoming people in. You can book online at museum.ie for your slot and enjoy uh, the entire exhibits that you would have before. Things are slightly different, so we have a one-way system for our visitors to follow. We have hand sanitising stations throughout the building and um, also you must wear a face covering so so there are a number of things but um, in general we think that people will enjoy a calmer quieter experience than you might have um, last summer for instance when the museum was full so we have a cap on our numbers of visitors um, but I think it means that you can spend time with these amazing objects that we're seeing here in the Treasury. Because here beside us is possibly Ireland's most famous artefact, the Arda Chalice. And as you say, in a busy summer, you might be 10 deep people trying to see it. But because of your booking system, you're going to get to stand beside it. Yeah, it's, it's a true treasure of um, Irish culture and it's something that we should all be rightly proud of in this country. Um, the Arda Chalice and the Arda Hoard. Um, we're surrounded by riches here. We have the tower brooch here on this side as well. So yeah, so ordinarily this case uh, would be packed with visitors all around it. People come from abroad to see artefacts like this in particular. So you can stand here and look at the amazing um, manufacture uh, of this early medieval treasure, undisturbed. And if people notice that it's a little bit more shiny than usual, that's because you didn't waste any time in lockdown and you all got stuck into cleaning the whole museum. Yeah, so um, ourselves and our conservation department colleagues got into pretty much every case and cleaned inside and out. So it looks like you can almost walk through these cases at the moment, they're so shiny. So we're really proud of that. You can check your makeup in the Arda Chalice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't visited Dublin in a while, you'll find lots of new attractions to explore. Windmill Lane Studios, where the likes of The Rolling Stones, U2 and Lady Gaga have recorded, is now offering a unique visitor experience down in the city's Dockland area. Along the Liffey, you'll find the Irish Immigration Museum, Epic. The modern museum was voted Europe's leading tourist attraction in 2019, beating the likes of the Eiffel Tower in Paris and the Colosseum in Rome. Of course, no visit to Dublin would be complete without a visit to the home of Ireland's most iconic drink, 
Guinness. At the storehouse, visitors can explore the story of Guinness before taking in the views of Dublin from the Gravity Bar while enjoying a pint. And if shopping is your thing, Dublin's iconic shopping districts are open for business. Just don't forget your mask. <laughs> Next stop for me, the Pierce Lyons Distillery, a truly unique venue right in the heart of the Liberties. The Pierce Lyons Distillery is a fully working distillery in a beautifully restored 18th century church. And I'm here for a very special cocktail making lesson. So James, there's a lot of history in this building. 800 years of history, absolutely. And there's over 100,000 burials around the graveyard surrounding it. Uh, over the 20th century, this place was used for commercial purposes twice as the church was deconsecrated. Now it is the Pierce Lyons Distillery and it's fully restored. And here is your bar so people can do all sorts of things from testings to cocktail making. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we do um, tutored tastings. Uh, we also do a cocktail making experience. We even do a whiskey blending experience. And so um, yeah, we try and cater to all needs. You know, if someone is just a casual whiskey drinker to the person who's super into it, um, we try and uh, cater to all that, so yeah. Well, we're going to do the cocktail making experience, yes. so what are we making? We're going to make a whiskey sour, so when it comes to measurements with a whiskey sour, just remember that it's uh, 2 one, one. so we're going to start off with our whiskey in the large measure, and you're going to fill that right to the top. Turn it yeah. over, and we're going to take the lemon juice and fill that right to the top. One. Is that coming out a bit slow, is it? I'm lagging, I'm lagging behind. <laughs> Spot the professional. It's nearly <laughs> the simple syrup. One part this, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And then if you want, add just a dollop of egg whites. Okay, so no measure. So take the other end of your can and bang it on there. And then shake. <laughs> Yeah, try, maybe it's actually good to keep one hand on top and one hand on the bottom and then <laughs> shake up and down. I'm glad you gave me the fancy apron. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Add measures of ice. We want to make it cold. Hold the top and bottom. And now, a bit more time cruise once yeah. you get the ice in, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you just put the strainer like this and we're going to pour into our chilled coupe glass. Fantastic. And there you go. Should be ready to Cheers. slaunch it or keep the distance. There you go. Oh, it's gorgeous. Nice, huh? Mmm. Slaunch it. After sampling those cocktails, a quick stroll was required. I headed back into the city centre to wrap up my Dublin adventure with a well deserved treat at Hugo's. The perfect end to a perfect day. showcasing everything that the capital has to offer. Now, after the break, meat on a stick. We've got Jacob's ribs on the menu next.